but this is where I, so what how do you defend against things that your innate immune response doesn't recognize that's when you have your adaptive immune response so again just like you have to install a new software based on your needs and your computer same with your adaptive immune response you have to start training your immune system to new things you encounter during your life that aren't already part of your innate immune system so this is how your body learns to attack new foreign chemicals that aren't that aren't part of our human evolution and experience so again things like our nobody has immunity to the <laughs> SARS-CoV-2 virus so everybody's adapted everyone who's affected they can't use their innate immune response they can try to limit it but eventually they need to fully recover they need to use their adaptive immune response why we don't have immunity this is a, something that our we've encountered something new that we've never encountered before as humans. So again, not every single pathogen is encoded in your genes. This is why we need it. We do cover a lot of those foreign things in general, but for more specific pathogens, you need your adaptive immune response to cover that. It's slower but more specific. So the thing about your immune adaptive immune response, it can't cover every single pathogen in existence because why? Well, you won't encounter every single pathogen that's in the world. So again, it's going to train your body to learn to defend against new pathogens, but the ones that you actually encounter in your life. So again, innate immunity and adaptive immunity to concentrate to compare and contrast. So innate, this recognizes general common patterns you find in, or general common chemical patterns you find in things like bacteria, viruses, and parasites. Whereas adaptive immunity, these recognize more, they're more specific. Now again, during human history and evolution, this is where you get innate immune responses. But again, adaptive, this is the stuff you encounter during your life. So innate immunity also activate in response to cellular damage. So the funny thing about this, say someone drives um, their car through one of the, like through your wall. Are you going to call the police? Yeah, you're probably going to call the police, right? Or say like someone runs over a fire hydrant and it's spewing everywhere. Do you think the police or some emergency is going to come along? Yeah, probably as well. So the thing about cellular damage, when it's like when there's smoke, there's fire. So if there's cellular damage, that means there's a good opportunity for pathogens to enter the body. So this is why cellular damage also tends to activate your innate immune response. So it uses existing cells, again, things like neutrophils, macrophages, and K cells, they're already circulating in your body. They're not just produced just in response to a new pathogen. Whereas adaptive immunity, it's slower. And the thing about it, billions and billions of cells need to be generated and trained just to fight a new adaptive immune response. This is why it takes a while to actually fight off a new infection that you're not innately immune to because you need to generate all these cells that takes time, that takes energy, that takes nutrients. But the end thing is like, do not think of them as two things. It's either innate or adaptive. That your body has a switch that says, okay, we're just going to go innate. We're just going to go adaptive. So they are categories, but you're, in the reality, your innate and adaptive immune responses work together. So do not think they're completely separate. Do not think it's either or. Again, get rid of this black and white thinking. Your immune response, your immune system is very complex, has many moving parts, and again, it's just saying like both the stuff you already have installed and the new stuff you have to work, train your cell body against, they have to work together to help mount to protect yourself against disease and pathogens. Again, it's how your body learns. So the thing is that how your body learns to attack against new foreign antigens. So again, remember antigens, we did cover that. Does that sound familiar? How about A antigens, B antigens, RH antigens? Yes, we are talking about the same general term. So antigens, any substance, any chemical that can cause an immune response. And in this specific term, we're talking about the adaptive immune response. So immunoglobulins, again, this is how you're able to do those blood typing and detect. So again, we're using immunoglobulins and agglutination, but so Antibodies can recognize antigens, but that's not the only things in your body that can recognize antigens. Again, your immune response does involve antibodies, but it's more than antibodies. It also involves cells. So cells and other receptors and other proteins can bind to antigens as well. It's not just antibodies. 
All right, so again, antibodies. So again, let's talk about antibodies just briefly. So antigen binding site. So this is a cartoon antibody. So antibodies actually have two typical antibodies have one or not one. One antibody has two antigen binding sites. So say you have a viral protein. So again, viral proteins, you're going to create antibodies against that viral protein. So your immune system can also attack and neutralize that virus as well. So then you have something called antigen presenting cells, APCs. So what are they? So these are any cells that can potentially display any antigen on MHC receptors. So this is pretty much most of your cells. So again, if it has an MHC class 1 receptor, it can present an antigen. But then you have professional APCs. So these are ones that not only display any antigen, but they also their purpose is not only to display antigens, but actually take the sample and uh, sample your extracellular surroundings and display them on MHC class 2 receptors. So again, remember, any nucleate cells can display or MHC class 1 receptors. But these professional APCs, they pretty much have exclusive use of MHC class 2 receptors. These are special. So, hey, what do we have here? Again, we have this patho all these pathogenic bacteria. We have neutrophils. And now these neutrophils have neutralized the pathogenic bacteria. And all these bacteria have released all these little bacterial proteins, lipids, and all these other polysaccharides in the background. So remember those dendritic cells, the ones with all those branches? So again, what do they do? They sample the surroundings and they bring it in and they process it. So now we're going to talk about how do they process these pathogenic samples that they've taken into their cell. Well, they sample the surroundings, but the dendritic cells are professional APCs. So meaning that their purpose is not only to sample the surroundings, but also display them to other cells. So they're going to use those MHC class 2 receptors. Again, they're professionals. And if viruses are detected, they produce interferons as well. So the thing is that they're taking their samples. Of, so what they're doing, they're taking pathogenic samples and then displaying it for all to see, including other immune cells as well. So again, professional so, antigen presenting cells, so MHC class 1. These present intracellular proteins. Your cells do that, or all your nucleate cells, the ones that have a nucleus, they present their intracellular proteins as part of their standard routine. MHC class 2, these present extracellular antigens. So again, these are things that these professional APCs take from their surroundings, and they're like, okay, this is what I found from the surroundings. The immune system, take a look at it. So again, professional APCs make exclu exclusive use of MHC class 2, including dendritic cells. Macrophages are also professional antigen presenting cells. Again, not only do they eat pathogens and foreign things in the body, but they also display it as well. And B cells we haven't covered yet, but we will. So professional APCs teach T cells via these MHC class 2 receptors. Again, they're more than just information hubs. They're also there to help train other cells as well. So lymph nodes. So lymph